Uh, good evening in Korean local time. Uh, first of all, uh, good evening. Procedure of constructing diabetes.
아한 박사님 그 뒤에 계셨네요. 네. 어. 아 예. 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 Uh, I think that there is a sound. Somebody needs to turn off the. Uh, I think who's 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 computer. Okay. Yeah, better use uh, earphone rather than the speaker, yeah, please. Okay, uh, let's start a uh, second session. And uh, uh, second session will be chaired by the uh, no, uh, Dr. Nosu Han. So uh, Dr. Nosu Han, please go ahead. Yes. Welcome to the second session. This session will be presented by three speakers. I'd like to introduce the first speaker of Professor Kyung Gu Baek from Gangnam Wonju National University. The title of his presentation is Wave Packet Propagation Dynamics with Adiabatic Potential Energy Surfaces, constructed by using Adiabatic Potential Energy Surfaces only. Please welcome Professor Kyung Gu Baek. Uh, good evening in Korean local time. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank Professor Cho Che and Mike Pilato for organizing this meeting and inviting me here. My talk today is about showing you some typical results of wave packet propagation dynamics for uh, bidirectional proton coupled electron transport process. But I'd like to emphasize you uh, my procedure of constructing diabetic potential energy surfaces using adiabatic potential energy only. 
I will start with a brief review and considerations about the base, real basics of diabetization and also about the dependence of non adiabatic coupling term along the nuclear coordinates. Because of my consideration about this, I was able to derive a very simple and efficient method called Degan coupling method uh, to provide the reliable magnitude of non adiabatic coupling term. And uh, before going further of my talk, as a side story of my talk, I'll show you, introduce you a uh, recent two examples of using my background coupling in semi-classical dynamics. And then get back to my talk, I'll explain you a little bit more details of procedure of constructing diabetic stage by using adiabatic potential energy surfaces only. Then, uh, the main body of my talk is that the wave packet propagation study of two cases of di bidirectional proton coupled electron transfer. And then I will make a short concluding remarks. Let's start considering by a typical case where only two electron states are mainly involved and strongly correlated and strongly interact. In these cases, the diabetic states can be obtained or constructed from adiabatic state with the unitary transformation matrix defined by using mixing angle like this. Then uh, the diabetic potential energy are related to the adiabatic potentials Va by these uh, equations. So at a given geometry, I mean at a given nuclear configuration, uh, the most rigorous way is computing mixing angle and then using these transformation equations. And one of the most rigorous way to obtain the mixing angle is the path integral by using the NACT computed directly. And because non adiabatic coupling term, also it is not a direct uh, physical observable, but it's a uh, physical quantity. So there could be some functional dependence, a simple, some useful functional dependence we can find. I mean, as far as I search, the first earliest notice about the dependence of the non adapt coupling term on nuclear coordinate was given in almost uh, four decades ago. Uh, in 1981 by Werner and Mayer. But this equation was not uh, much explored. Well, I mean, the implication of this equation and the use of this equation was not much explored until almost three decades, until late 2000, when uh, Professor Barandas studied, uh, carried out many studies about trying to find some better and useful functional dependencies. He published several papers and, and finally he concluded that the linear combination of a hyperbolic secant equation could be the best options. And he suggested to use uh, three, um, three terms expansion of this equation. Uh, I think that's not good enough. So I tried to find some more efficient functional dependence and finally found uh, some event. I found out that uh, Laplace function that has the capability of describing a spike behavior of non adapt coupling term at a singular point. And so I tried to find uh, some useful and uh, systematic combination of two functions, Lorentz function and Laplace functions. And I found out that if uh, uh, alpha parameter of the Lorentz function is defined somehow, and the uh, beta parameter of the Laplace function is given by, produced by using this equation from the alpha value, then making a geometric average of those two. Actually, the geometric average here between those two functions, I mean Laplace function and the Lorentz function, is a little bit different from you may think. I'll show you that the geom how to make a geometric uh, average of the, those two at, uh, a little bit later. But by using the geometric average of those two, 
uh, I showed there uh, the correct behavior of the non-adapt coupling term not only at near the singular point but also at the configuration quite away from conical intersection region can be described very successfully and this average has just two parameters I can determine the alpha parameter and the beta parameter and then make a, a geometric average and then I can get the full uh, distribution of reliable non adapt coupling term over the full range I need to cover but the problem is that I still have to compute the non adapt coupling term somehow uh, about four years ago I finally found a simple equation after considering the origin of the Lorentzian functional dependence and the vibrant coupling theory and the hellman feynman theory and so on and also I considered the situation where the geometry of the minimum energy gap and the crossing point between diabetic states is not coincide in order to control, in order to handle that cases, I tried many things, and finally I found a very simple equation shown here. According to this equation, non-adapt coupling term can be computed or approximated by using adiabatic energies only and the second order derivation of the energy gap with respect to the nuclear coordinates. This equation may seem very simple and you probably cannot believe it that this simple equation can give the comparable result of the n adapt coupling term directly computed by this way so I choose four target systems to test I mean show my application equation uh, approximate equation looks, 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 uh, works well that uh, the four cases here uh, it uh, corresponds to a little bit different four cases of the topology of the potential surfaces near avoid crossings. And uh, the avoid crossing region is magnified here in the second row. And the non adapt coupling term actually computed by conventional method is shown here. And, and here is the comparison between actually computed non adapt coupling term and the uh, approximate result or by using my approximate equations as you can see uh, the result of my simple equation produced almost comparable result to the actually calculated non adapt coupling term even so as the geometry i mean the nuclear configuration become a little away from the non adapt coupling non adapt crossing region then the difference between actually computed non adapt coupling term and approximated well uh, result by equation become noticeable. But the interesting point is that as the nuclear configuration approach to the avoid crossing or non uh, uh, conical intersection structure, then the difference between uh, reference uh, non adapt coupling term and uh, approximate result by using my equation become even smaller. This simple equation is good enough to study the behavior of the non adapt coupling term around uh, near the conical intersection or avoid crossings. But in terms of actual computation, uh, generating the second order derivation of the energy gap is not a simple task uh, in most cases because most evidence methods provide just the uh, first order uh, differentiation of the energy so I found out uh, a little bit complicated but a very efficient method of generating second order differentiation of the energy gap by using just the three consecutive geometries and also I showed that my simple equation works well even other cases like uh, uh, crossing between triplet states here and also uh, uh, along the route 
uh, around the conical intersection. That's the case of CH2 radical. I compare the same thing. I mean the comparison between actually calculated non-adder coupling term and the approximate result by using my simple equation. And it shows that although the agreement is not perfect, because my equation is a kind of approximation, so it cannot be perfect. But anyway, it is reasonably good enough. Although I published these two papers in 2017 and 2018, uh, showing that my simple equation can produce very reliable uh, approximation of the non adapt coupling term by using adiabatic energies only, but it seems like uh, um, not many people uh, consider this seriously. Fortunately to me, two papers were published recently. Just about several months ago, Professor Babati uh, adapted my approximate equation and uh, modified a little to be a time-dependent version. In my simple equation, the second order derivative of the energy gap was with respect to the nuclear coordinates. But in his time-dependent version, the second order derivative was, is defined with respect to the time. And he coined the new terminology, time-dependent background, uh, simply TDBA uh, approximations. He modified, he extended his uh, Newton X program package uh, to include uh, this TDBA method and applied it to the ATLAN and carried out 500 trajectories with the DCFSSH method. He compared the uh, non adapt coupling, magnitude of the non adapt coupling term, and also the change of population on different electronic states along the time and also the change of the mean absolute strength along the He also applied the same methods with the TDBA to the full band with 200 trajectories and compared the probability of jumping between different electronic states and also the compared the change of population. And his final conclusion is that the T BBA method provides a qualitatively correct picture, but the agreement in quantitative uh, aspect is not perfect. Yeah, that's, that's, that could. Another paper is also published just two, two months ago by this group. And uh, it, uh, they used uh, almost the same equation as uh, Babati used. And instead of using BA uh, terminology, they coined the new terminology calling curvature approximative time derivative coupling formula, and they used the kappa instead of BA. Anyway. And they adapted the new approximation. They combined the new approximation with their other two different uh, uh, methods, classic semi-clinical trajectory methods, and compared the result of their original method and the uh, uh, modified method with approximate couplings. And, and in their concluding remarks, the aspect of computation time was mainly emphasized that uh, by using my approximation, the computation time can be reduced noticeably. Here, I'd like to emphasize the main advantage of my, my approximation because this equation is just a simple algebraic equation. So any, any method that provides uh, a diabetic potential energy surfaces can be used, can be applied by using this equation, even if the method do not provide the negative coupling term. Now, let's get back to the main load of my talk today.
uh, 10 minutes ago, I have shown you that this simple equation is good enough to generate reliable non-linear decoupling term, especially near the uh, guess near the conical intersection or avoid crossings. So at the first st step, compute the non-adapt coupling term by applying this equation. In here, the second order derivative of the, of the energy gap can be obtained by any methods here. The point is that any of the above methods is good enough to after the get the non approximate non adapt coupling term. We plot the approximate values along the nuclear coordinates. Then we can determine the QC. That's the crossing point between the diabetic surfaces. And here the, the definition of QC is defined as the point where approximate value of the non coupling has the maximum magnitude. Then the alpha parameter of the Lorentz function is it can be determined by this relation and also the beta parameter of the Laplace function can be determined from the alpha. Once the dependence of the non adapt coupling term along the nuclear coordinate, then the path angle at the given nuclear coordinate also can be represented by a, a functional function by a function. And then uh, finally, uh, I made the geometric of average of those two. Uh, well, actually here, the geometric average is defined by this method. I tried many different combinations of uh, using uh, combina combination of the two functions, Lorentz function and Laplacian, Laplace functions, and I found that obtaining geometric average by this equation is good, is the best result, is generate the best result. Because the mixing angle at the nuclear coordinate, nuclear configuration is determined, then the diabetic potential energy surfaces, not only diagonal term, but also off diagonal term, that's the cup that corresponding point to the coupling between diabetic states can be obtained simply by this equation. Here are two examples of actual atp propagation dynamics for bidirectional proton coupled electron transfer. This one is the charge transfer excited state of NH3Cl system. Adiabatic energies at uh, these many grid points are computed, and then the diabetic potential energy surfaces as I explained you uh, previously, was constructed. Uh, here the diabetic potential energy surfaces are shown just for one case of angle, and uh, the similar uh, pictures for 18 different angles is combined to generate a three-dimensional uh, three-dimensional three-state uh, diabetic potential energy surfaces and the coupling between diabetic states. And by solving the time-dependent nuclear equation, the initial wave, vibrational wave packet of the precursor N ion is generated, as shown here. And after the charge transfer excited state was generated by high-energy photon, about 6.5 eV, the time propagation was simulated by this. It's shown in but the movie you just show here is uh, not easy to understand what is the meaning. So the propagation of the three-dimensional ray packet is projected onto two-dimensional space at a selected uh, angle, as shown here, and analyzed many things. Especially the figure here shows the change of population along the propagation time it's the relative population between different electron states and it's the absolute population because uh, uh, some part of the wave packet is leaking out the boundary of the uh, simulation box. And it's the population absorbed at the boundary, uh, absorbed by the negative 
image, negative imaginary potential placed at the boundary and accumulated. By using the accumulated ray packet absorbed at the boundary, we can compute the branching ratio uh, between the electron transfer channel and the proton transfer channel. The branching ratio here is defined as the ratio like this. And the dependence of the branching ratio on the initial vibration level of the precursor anion and also the dependence on the isotope substitution uh, of the connecting hydrogen. So the main result of the wave packet propagation in this case is about the branching ratio because that's the one of the directly observable physical quantity. But also the uh, one of the advantages of the wave packet propagation by using diabetic potential surface is that it can provide some further detailed information about uh, a few femtosecond dynamics, time scale dynamics. Here is the second example of my result of the wave packet propagation for the bidirectional proton coupled electron transfer case. But now I extended it to three dimensional case. And also, the previous study was used just two electronic states. But as the symmetry is lower, the third electronic state is also involved. So the, uh, this time, the extended uh, result corresponds to the result by using three states within three dimensional space by using the diabetic potential surfaces constructed by using adiabatic potential energy. After generating the adiabatic energy by conventional method at this grid point and constructed the uh, diabetic surfaces I explained before. And here is just one case of the angle. And uh, I made, uh, we constructed 24 similar uh, diabetic surfaces along the angle and uh, connected the, those 24 and finally constructed the three dimensional, three state coupled diabetic potential in the surfaces. It also shows the nuclear wave packet of the precursor anion and the propagation of the wave packet, well, the uh, projection on the two-dimensional space of the three-dimensional propagation of the wave packet basis, the change of the relative population along the time, absolute population on adiabatic state or diabetic stage. And also it's the change of the branching ratio along the time depending on the initial uh, vibration level of the precursor anion. Here I'd like to show you that the wave packet propagation dynamics can provide some what additional information that the dependence of the photoabsorption spectra on the initial vibration level of the precursor anions. Uh, it could be uh, useful for possible IR plus UV two-proton experiments. And I also computed the overlap of the wave packet absorbed at the boundary. The dashed line is the wave packet absorbed at the boundary and made the overlap of, the, of this absorbed wave packet to the uh, vibrational wave function of the final product, product fragments. And then it gives the possible uh, population, uh, popul difference of the population on each vibration level of the products, both the association products. Um, my concluding remarks. Although the main body of my talk today was uh, about showing you some typical result of wave packet dynamics using diabetic states, because the wave packet dynamics using diabetic states has some advantages. Especially, it can provide for the detailed picture of uh, just a few femtosecond time scale dynamics. But I'd like to emphasize you that. I have developed an efficient, systematic, and reliable procedure of constructing diabetic states and coupling between them. 
by using just uh, adiabatic potential energies only. During this procedure, by approximation, for the non adapt coupling term played a very important role. Also, there are several things to be modified and improved and extended further. But nowadays, I started using machine learning and tried to apply uh, this my procedure at the training stage of machine learning. And as a side story of my talk today, I have shown you, I introduced you uh, two uh, recent examples of using back uncoupling in semi classical quantum dynamics. And also, I think using the back uncoupling is very useful for a better systematic search of multi dimensional sim conical sim space. Uh, finally, I thank you for your attention. And I am here awaiting your comments and questions. Thank you.